this lesson is copper plate engraving. This is an engraving of my dog called Sonny and before the days of photographs the only way of getting a picture in a book was to engrave it on a copper plate and then take prints of it. So you can imagine what a flourishing trade it used to be. Sadly it's one of those trades that's dying so I intend to keep the skills alive. And it's thanks to a gentleman I never met called Ili Botezatu and he changed his name when he moved to Perth to James Brown. Sadly he passed away in last January and his wife Pauline donated his portfolio of artwork and his tools to me to share with my students and this inspires my students. He's a great artist. He really didn't acknowledge his own talents so I share this with my students and they get inspired by it. So his job at the Perth Mint was to engrave and make coins. And that's the gentleman there. And this is some of the coins that he created. He also did logos as well. There's a, a, a huge collection of artwork here, too much to go through right now. So. I'd like you to stick around after the lesson because I've put some more pictures in there uh, for you to check out and hope you enjoy. Part of the collection I was lucky enough to receive is this book here, it's called The Art of Engraving by James B. Meek and it's a great book if you're keen to pick up your skills in engraving as I am. and. It goes into um, engraving pictures of animals and lots of scroll work like that and then later on it will get you into lettering or calligraphy. Uh, it's a lot more technical doing the lettering so I'm not going to tackle that until, I'm, until my skills are picked up enough. Um, but this reminds me of when I was at college we were taught to engrave animals and if you can if you're a reasonable drawer then this is what I recommend you do is um, engrave an animal because the occasional slip within the boundaries can be covered up and you are going to slip around a, a bit with your gravers when you first get going I know I, I've been practicing and slipping a bit um, so that's what I'm going to do now and it's always a good idea to do something that you're passionate about so I'm very passionate about my beautiful Labrador called Sonny. I've got a drawing here that I'm going to use as uh, my inspiration and uh, try and turn a nice drawing into an engraving. I'm going to do lots of practice before I get started and I need to do some straight runs, make sure I can keep the graver nice and straight and do some curved runs and it's the work that turns not the graver and I'm wearing a rubber thimble to save wear and tear on my thumb the cut or the angle of the cuts if it's too steep it's just going to dig in, dig in like that and if it's too shallow it's going to slip off so you have to work on that obviously make sure the graver is sharp now, this is one of James's gravers, and you'll see it's different to the way that I shape my gravers for setting. I'll just show you how mine look. They've got a cutout like that. So the problem with using my setting gravers for uh, for engraving is some of the very sharp onglades can break quite easily. So um, this is why these gravers are shaped like this because some of James's graves are so fine that they're breaking no time if they were uh, really thin round here. So I like the way that these are shaped and when you're first starting engraving then you, your weapon of choice would be a pointed or an ongle graver. So something like this. Now I was taught a while ago by this old gentleman to use a, a flat graver like that but you just use the corner of the flat graver and I got used to that and I really liked, liked 
engraving that way work really well because you can shape the line, you can widen it by changing the angle of the graver. And this guy told me it was the Scottish way of engraving, so I don't know exactly what that means, but um, one thing I've learned from the book that I've got here is that there's no right and wrong way. There's lots of engravers have their own particular way of engraving and even so much as um, some engravers will do it standing up some will use a hammer so just they won't have a handle on it they'll just use it as a chisel and hammer along so there's lots of different ways to do it it's a matter of experimenting and finding your favorite method so now I've found the uh, graver that I'm going to use for most of the work and this is a square graver you can see the shape of it the point there so it's got a right angle shape there and also it's been shaped at the bottom so it's got slightly um, shaped there so it's quite easy to turn with this it steers really well and I've kind of got used to the right angle where the grave is cutting and I'm not slipping too much. So now I'm going to change this for a piece of copper that I've annealed and it's uh, been cleaned up ready for my drawing. I'll try and do it the size of a coin. Scribe that in just in case I start losing the pencil marks. Start in a non vital area just in case I start to slip. I'll do this until I get used to it. found as I've gone along I've slipped a lot less and I've gained a lot of confidence as well so I'm really enjoying doing this it's hard to know when to stop I don't want to overdo it so I'm gonna call it quits now and there we have it engraving on a copper plate and this is my dear sweet Labrador dog called Sunny hope you enjoyed but please stick around and check out some more of James Brown's artwork.